Hello and welcome back to Handheld Computing. Today we're going to have a look at a couple of games for Palm OS. They are both space RPG trading games similar to Elite. We're going to start off with Void, which will run on anything running 3.5 OS or higher. If you're not running Palm OS 3.5 or higher, skip ahead in the video to the halfway point and check out Space Trader. It'll run on anything running 2.0 or higher. I'm afraid Palm OS 1 doesn't run a lot of stuff. Let's take a look. So let's take a look at the setup. Interestingly, the file is the same whether you've got a color device or a black and white device. There's no separation. And if it's color, it displays color. And if it's black and white, it displays black and white. So here we get a, a run through showing the various different ships that we're going to meet in Void. So we'll tap this. We're going to start a new slot. And we're going to go normal. If you're going to go trade only, actually no, don't bother going trade only. And you'll see why when I show you the other game we're going to look at today. And so just go normal. Trade only is very uninteresting for this. So here we are going through the space station tunnel and we've arrived at our initial destination. So we've got a few options straight away. Trade, equip, status map mission and leave so if we go to trade we can see what things are currently valued at on this space station and what's available if we go to equip we can refuel our ship and um, in some stations things are available and on this one nothing is but you can buy weapons you can buy upgrades so ECM is to protect you from missiles. Missiles are obviously to shoot people. Um, there's a docking computer, which I strongly recommend getting. We'll look at it in a bit. Large cargo bay, which obviously means you can carry more cargo. Cargo insurance, which does mean when you get blown up, all your cargo is restored. I, I would recommend it if you can afford it. And um, the extra photon lasers are much better than the standard photon lasers. The hyper jump is a single use jump that allows you to move essentially anywhere within the map. And this is very useful. Some missions are time dependent. And so having a couple of these as backup once you've made a bit of cash is very handy. And a cloaking device, if you're intending to smuggle mar narcotics, you are going to need one of those or the cops are going to get you. Next, we've got status, which is total new. Uh, we've only just started. Uh, map shows you the uh, current location. So that's where we are. These are all the different planets that are currently in range. If we zoom out, you can see that there are a lot of planets available in this game. It is a big game. To visit all of those planets is going to take you some time. We'll come out of that for a second. And then we've got mission. And we don't currently have any active missions. Otherwise, they get listed there. And last but not least, leave. We're not going to do that just yet. On the menu bar, we've got some options so the captain's log can make notes and this is handy sometimes it'll say oh go here or you find out there's a trade you can do there so handy to write things down and there's a preferences so we can remove the space dust or not you can invert it and of course this is a color device so it's automatically selected to color but if you wish you can put it back in black and white yeah you can register it and um, this has been registered at quit obviously we're not about to do that help which just obviously tells you a little bit about it how you control things and last but not least about just to tell you when it was made so here we are at the beginning of the game we've got a hundred credits in cash which um, as you'll soon find out is not very much so next up what we need to do is some trading the best way of doing this is to go to the map Select a planet, um, and once you find a planet, you can click on details and it'll tell you about it. So, so it's a tourist planet. Um, it's currently, government is anarchy, so uh, not ideal. It's class B. So A is the wealthiest planet, uh, B less so, and C is essentially undeveloped, so they're, they're quite poor on C. Um, tells you a little bit about the population, so feel free to read that. Some of them are quite amusing. So if we go to a different planet, this one's a mining planet. So we're going to find things that obviously they mine. Um, and actually, that's where we're going to go first. So we're going to go out of here. Hit trade. We're going to buy some luxuries. So they are 26 a unit, but they only have one in stock. But we're going to buy one. 
go to the map and we are heading there so hit hyperspace when you're ready and off you go so once you've jumped into hyperspace you'll arrive there'll be a planet sometimes you're not facing it sometimes you are and the planet has a space station you can see a dot just on the screen here so first of all let's discuss the hood so you know what's going on this is your speed indicator your altitude above the planet this essentially tells you if you're being attacked you've got an l for laser which is the current weapon we've got e for the ecms we've got an m for missile and a v because we can view the rear Here we've got missiles, engines, lasers, and down this bar, when we get some, we'll have the ECMs. You can have three of those. You can have three missiles, and you'll see them as slots. The lasers heat up and will overheat, so if you fire them continuously, like so, they quickly overheat and then stop working. You've got to watch your energy bar. This is to do with how fast you're going and how far you've traveled. And then control wise, this is your left, your right, up, down. That's one is your speed. You'll see the speed increases. And this one is your laser. So the best thing to do in terms of trying to dock is to bring yourself level with the space station or in fact, just not go up or down ever. Um, and then head towards the planet. We can see the space station there. And if you tap the dial it'll it'll give you a directional pointer once we're close to facing the planet and we can see that's nearly spun round we're just going to ease off bring ourselves round there it is so we're aiming for that little gap and um, believe me if you don't get it exactly right you are not going to last very long at this game To dock safely, you must be at a quarter speed, absolute maximum. And you need basically to be bang on and line up fully. Otherwise, you just explode. Great, so we're in a different station this time. I did crash, so I don't have anything to trade. Um, but we can buy things. So as you'll see, because this is a mining planet, Platinum, gold, and diamonds are relatively cheap, um, 89, 93, and 101. Whereas the tourism planets, they love these things. They pay a fortune for them. So we're going to buy one platinum because that's all we can afford. We're going to refuel the ship because if we don't, we're not going to get anywhere. And I'd love to buy some weapons, but we've got no chance, no money. So once you've bought a docking device... All you need to do is get approximately lined up with the opening and you will see the little dock button come up. So as I swing back, here it is. Hit that and it's going to do the rest of the maneuvering for you. It'll also travel at basically the maximum speed that you can enter the station at. In general, it is a lot safer. And we're in. So once you've done a fair amount of trading, you can end up with some excess cash. I would definitely recommend you use some of this to upgrade your ship. So in terms of equipment, I've already got most of what you can buy. Um, I've not fully loaded on the hyperjump and I haven't bothered as yet with a cloaking device. So when it comes to combat, the best weapons to use are missiles. These self-guide and in one hit will destroy the target. They can be shot down by the enemies using their own lasers, but otherwise they pretty much guarantee a kill. Once you've collected the bounty for killing them, don't forget to go and collect your loot. If you've not got any missiles, lasers are obviously your next best option. The lasers themselves are really good for taking down enemy missiles. They're not as good against ships, but can destroy them as long as you keep up repeated shots. Make sure you've upgraded them first. Lastly, keep an eye on that energy bar. Every time you get hit by an enemy laser, it'll drop. And if it drops to zero, that's game over. So while Void is compatible with OS 5, you'll see things look to run 
a little faster than perhaps they ought to. Um, and this does make it quite difficult to play the game. Let me show you. As you'll see, the graphics actually look a lot nicer in OS 5. I don't know how they've done this, but the graphics package looks much better. But you can see the movement is very fast. So we'll, we're going to go and try and dock. So, oops, that's my lasers. On the Clear TJ35, it is slightly slower than the T3. Um, so it is almost manageable. Um, it is still a bit too fast, if I'm honest, but it's almost manageable. As you can see, though, if you're going to enter combat using a, a, an OS-5, you're going to need the reactions of a Jedi in order to be able to manage your weapons and actually shoot down the enemies. So I don't really recommend it. So while the controls do take a little bit of getting used to, Void is an excellent game, and I do enjoy the dogfighting aspect of it. Obviously, you can't really run it on Palm 5 OS, those 200 plus megahertz CPUs just make the game run too fast. I did try a couple of overclockers to see if I could underclock it and make it run a bit slower, but without any joy. It will run in the uh, Palm emulators, but you have the same issue that it just runs too fast. Before we have a look at Space Trader, I just want to say thank you for subscribing. We have over 300 subs now. I would love to see some more, so if you're watching and you've got this far, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss my next video. So Space Trader comes with three different installation packets. A black and white one, which is the smallest of the three, obviously. A grayscale one and a colour version. The black and white version will run on any of the handhelds. The grayscale version requires Palm OS 3.5 or higher. And of course the colour one will really only run on colour devices makes sense. So if you want to save a little bit of space on your device, uh, use the black and white one. Otherwise, if you've got colour, crack on. This game runs fine in any OS with any CPU simply because it's a turn-by-turn -turn strategy game rather than any dogfighting or timed events. So we're going to take a look at Space Trader. This will run on just about any Palm device. Almost any. You do need OS 2, which this one doesn't have. Let's have a look at the startup. So first of all, it generates a galaxy, so it's slightly different every time, unlike Void, which has a predetermined set of stars and planets. You get to pick your name. I'm going to stick with Jameson. You can have various modes of difficulty. Um, we're going to stick with Not Impossible. Uh, I'll go with Easy. That sounds much more up my street. You've got 16 skill points that you can distribute. And these are worth thinking about before you jump in there and start figuring out what you're going to do. If you have pilot points, this allows you to evade ships during combat, which means you're much more likely to escape without damage. If you have fighter points, it means that you are much more likely to hit a ship in combat. So if you're intended being a pirate, this is useful. Trading points means that you get better bargains when you go to various planets and you'll find it easier just to make money. And engineer means that in between combat, you'll repair your ship much more easily. So you'll end up with a ship that's running better. Personally, I like to have plenty of pilot and fighter skills and that's because I like to play pirate later on. Okay. So here we are right at the beginning of the game. We've got a special button which gives us a special mission. Um, so we're being offered um, some cargo for a thousand credits. I think we're going to have to decline for the time being. So let's take a look at a few of the options. So we can buy goods. We can sell goods. Um, we can go to the shipyard where we can repair our ship or um, refuel. You can also buy new ships in this game. So let me just show you what ships are on offer. Um, so this is what we've got at the moment. The Nat and like in Elite, you can then upgrade to better ships, more cargo bays, more weapons or more gadget slots. And the cost of them goes up accordingly. Not all planets sell them. You need to look for a high-tech planet if you're wanting to buy these things. Then we've got the galaxy map. So this shows us how far we can go with the current level of fuel. If we hit menu, we've got some more options. So we can look at the galactic chart, which shows us all the planets that are available. You can also buy equipment. Uh, so you can buy uh, lasers. 
up to a military standard, energy shields, refractive shields, extra cargo bays, which is very useful, or to repair, which adds to your engineering skill, navigating, which adds to your piloting skill, and targeting, which adds to your fighting skill. There's also a cloaking device, which if you are going to trade in illegal things, is very useful. On here, we've also got the personnel roster. Uh, we don't have anyone in, so that's fine. There's no personnel, obviously. We can go to the bank, and I do recommend you do this, because what you can do is borrow some money at the beginning and pay it back later. So we're going to borrow the maximum amount. At some point, it might be worth buying insurance, but generally, I don't bother. We can go back to the system information screen. We can look at our commander status, so how many kills we've got, how long we've been flying, that kind of thing. In this menu, if we've got any quests, they show up here. This has got details of your ship. And of course, if we've got any special missions, they show up here. Then we're back down to galactic chart and short range chart. So this just tells you a little bit about the planet we're currently on. What we're going to do, we're going to head to the warp screen, tap on a planet. And then what you want to do is obviously because we're trading, you can tap on the average price list. And this will tell you basically whether you're going to make money or not. If it's highlighted in black, it's because it's available on the planet. If it's not, then it's not currently available. And what we really want is to look at the price differences. So we know if we buy it all, we're going to make about 26 credits a unit. So let's do that. When it comes to trading, the biggest payoffs tend to be for firearms, narcotics and robots. So keep your eye out for high tech places that want these things or sell these things. And this will make money real fast. Just be aware that you will get attacked on your way in between. So when you fly in between systems, there's no dogfighting. The screen instead looks like this. So I've come across this pirate and my options are to attack, to flee or to surrender. If I surrender, they will take my cargo. If I flee, they might try and shoot me. And um, I'm pretty tricked out, so I'm going to attack. And they, they attack and I attack. And so you can see it becomes like a turn-based game. There's the damage being highlighted on the vessel. It's now trying to run away, so I'm going to attack it again but he's escaped. Um, here's the police. If you try and flee the police and you've got no reason to, it'll say, do you really want to? Um, and of course we don't want to. You can bribe them should you wish them not to uh, inspect your cargo, or you can submit for inspection. And if they find nothing, they will simply wave you on your way. Attacking other vessels that aren't pirates is likely to end up with a police record. And it does warn you when you try and attack the first one. Um, but after that, it's just up to you. If you're successful in your attack, you can plunder them. If you decide you don't want to destroy them anyway, and you can take whatever you want. And then when you arrive at your destination, there might be a special mission on offer, like this one. Sell what we found. Refuel our ship. And then we can go anywhere we want. So after you've played for a while and upgraded your ship, as you fly around visiting more and more planets, you'll start to get missions. So here's a selection of ones that I currently have on offer. Uh, once you complete these missions, sometimes you've granted boosts to your skill set. Sometimes you've granted money or credits. Sometimes you've granted objects. To complete these quests, you usually have to go somewhere. And to do that, we'll have a look at Regulus. What you want to do is go to the galactic chart. Hit find and then type in the name of the place you want to go. It'll then mark it with a star and in your normal warp screen, you'll see an arrow pointing in that direction. And this means that you can then easily navigate to where you want him to go. As part of my research, I thought I'd ask a member of the public what they thought of Space Trader. Excuse me, sir. How are you finding Space Trader? Yes, it's very good. Would you care to elaborate? It's brilliant. Now go away. Thanks. I hope you've enjoyed this look at a couple of my favourite Palm OS games. Go dust off your old handhelds and have a go. It's a lot of fun. In the meantime, if you've got this far, you've obviously enjoyed my video. A thumbs up would be amazing. And if you did want to give me a sub, I'd be very pleased. Perhaps you have a favourite game for Palm OS handheld, or maybe for another OS that we've already looked at. If that's the case, pop a comment below and I'll be sure to check it out. My name's Hugh. This is Handheld Computing. Thanks for watching.